Welcome everyone and thanks for tuning in to this presentation on timber portal frames. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the principal engineer for Maya Timber in New South Wales. Maya Timber is one of the largest distributors of timber products in Australia and supplies both merchants and the Frame and Trust Centre with timber and associated products. Afsil Lafi, my colleague in Victoria and I, provide high level technical expertise to our customer base and look for new solutions to fill gaps in the construction process. Why well, start my presentation with commercial buildings? These are examples of what you commonly think of when timber portal frames are mentioned. Rob will focus on this sector, but you can see the Maya Timber New South Wales warehouse and two projects from New Zealand being the Carter Holt Harvey Dry Mill and the Museum of Technology and Transport Aviation Hall. They involve large volumes of timber and require a level of expertise for optimise and erection, but they're cost comparable to steel and provide positive psychological and physiological environments. I personally go through our warehouse every day I'm in the office, and although I may have some bias, I find it a warmer and more soothing space. But why limit our view of timber portals to large commercial structures? The alternative is detached single family dwellings or multi-row townhouses. In Australia, these are predominantly lightweight timber frames. The timber used is either individually designed, things like floor joists and wall studs, or through a system solution like nail plated roof trusses. So is there a market for timber portal frames in the family home? Timber portal frames can sometimes replace steel and builders prefer a one-stop shop for the primary structure as it can create issues when steel and timber are fabricated and supplied separately. Residential housing is also a simple path to market. Commercial buildings often go through one or more complex tender processes which take a long time. In comparison, a residential home is commonly quoted and ordered in time scales of weeks rather than months. And even though volumes may be low on an individual project, the high quantity makes it a viable proposition. But where can we see timber portals being used in homes? Around an opening to create a bracing unit, replacing steel in large open plan living areas, or even an alternative for the rural shed market. We'll explore a couple of these in the presentation today. Let's firstly consider wall bracing. The progression of architecture in Australia has been to create homes with large open plan living, along with taller walls and larger windows. These factors mean there are fewer walls capable of resisting wind loads and the higher walls actually increase the racking forces. It's a tug of war between the architect and the designer of the building and coming up with compliant bracing is the challenge. AS 1684 is the residential timber framing standard which sets out requirements for quantity and distribution of bracing units. But in many cases, like in the picture shown, it's very difficult to meet these requirements. How do we tackle this dilemma? Essentially, solid walls that are longer than 600 millimetres can be braced with sheet bracing like OSB, ply or hardboard, or with metal strap bracing. Once you get narrower than 600, the capacities drop off significantly and these solutions become unviable. Nail plate companies have developed a, bio, a variety of narrow timber truss braces, which give better capacities. And there are also steel truss brace solutions. The issues with these are twofold in terms of tie down and cost. For a short wall brace, which is 2,400 high and only 400 wide, simple mechanics show you that the tie down force is six times the racking load at the top. So a five kilonewton racking force needs a 30 kilonewton tie down, which means chemical anchoring to the slab. And the cost should actually combine the unit cost as well as the installation cost, which is higher with chemical anchoring. Added to this, the steel truss braces remove the one-stop shop scenario for the builder, whilst making it harder for follow-on trades like electricians and plasterers. So why can't we utilise a timber portal frame around openings where the cost, tie down requirement and installation are all reasonable? One such off the shelf product available in Australia is a Simpson Strong Type PFS or portal frame system. This uses double LVL columns and beams in conjunction with a portal frame accessory kit. 
It's suitable for, for openings from 600 mil to 5.5 metres wide and a maximum height of three metres. For this range, there is a single capacity as shown in the table. So essentially you have a single product to fit all conditions. If you have 300 millimetres on one side and on, sorry, on either side of the opening, you get a racking capacity of 5.87 kilonewtons. If you have 300 millimetres on one side and only 90 millimetres on the other, it becomes a single wall portal with a 2.94 kilonewton capacity. The accessory kit comes with all the hardware to construct the portal frame, but the LVL pieces and anchorage items need to be bought separately. It should be noted that the tie down of the Simpson portal frame system is still through chemical anchoring. It requires 16 mil threaded rod epoxy set into the concrete and a 400 deep edge beam is needed in the areas of tie down. To further simplify portal frame bracing, we've developed a product called MyBrace. It uses prefabricated composite sections, which are essentially C-section columns and lintel with the LVL pieces overlapping in the corners. Here, a moment connection is provided with screws, which are located into pre-drilled holes in the columns. You just need to ensure the column and lintel are tight against each other, then fill up all the holes with screws. With a moment connection in the corners, the anchorage to slab is significantly less, so we utilise concrete screw bolts that are common in residential construction. The kit comes complete with all the items needed. Columns, lintel, moment screws, tie down bracket and screw bolts, as shown in the picture in the centre, so nothing else is needed. In using mechanical anchors, it means that the bracing unit can either be assembled on site or can even be built into a manufactured wall frame in the factory. Also by designing and making to the exact opening, we have the ability to change the column and lintel sizes to suit. Normally the columns are the same width, so a designation of my brace 3036 has 300 wide columns and a 360 deep lintel. But what capacities does a solution like this have? The capacity depends on the opening size and loads on the lintel. Looking at the tables, which are included in the MyBrace technical flyer, a MyBrace 3030, being 300 columns and lintel, can have a capacity in a non-load bearing wall of up to 7.1 kilonewtons. It can also get a racking load of up to six kilonewtons in a load bearing wall scenario. This will in most cases be enough to deal with even distribution. It has a simple mechanical tie down and comes out cheaper in cost than a steel truss brace system. My brace can also be used in multi-storey buildings, carrying both roof and floor loads. To do a bespoke solution for individual, every individual opening requires a level of automation. And this is where I have to give credit to AFSL who developed the My brace system with me. An order request comes from the customer with all the information needed for the design of a standard My brace. We can then use our internal design tool to quickly check and size the timber members. Note that with all timber portal systems, the lintel design is included as part of the brace, meaning the bracing unit also resists gravity loads. The design tool calculations include lintel design, column design, sway deflection, mean joint moment capacity and tie down. Once the customer approves the proposal and orders the my brace, the design tool automatically calculates a BBX file for all the components, including the drilling of the screw pattern, which is sent to a Hundegger saw to be precision cut. The composite sections are fabricated, ancillary is included, and the unit packaged up and sent to the customer. This process can take as little as two days from order. After delivery, the final piece of the puzzle is the installation guide with step-by-step -step instructions on how to construct the mine brace. So let's look at some examples. On the left is a very common scenario, a three metre wide garage that has a 2.4 metre door in it, leaving only 300 mil on either side. A my brace 3030 here allowed the wall to be braced with 5.3 kilonewtons of racking capacity, but it also provides a stiff wall in which to mount the roller door. On the right is a similar situation with a pool cabana extension. You can note in this case, the columns are cantilevered to the top of the wall frame so that they can take the racking loads from the ceiling diaphragm back down to the portal frame. My brace can also encompass multiple openings. On the left, we have a My Brace 3630 over the top of a combination window. 
The lintel here is designed to span the whole length, meaning the inside of the opening is only infill framing. The 360 columns allow for a stronger knee joint connection to give a stiffer portal frame. If you look at those last three examples, the assembly time of each of them was in the order of 20 minutes, which makes it a quick and easy process. Then on the right, we have what's called a special my brace. This is a stack of door opening out onto a deck with ocean views, which happens in many coastal villages in Australia. The design was done from scratch as the internal design tool does not cater for this complexity yet. It has 300 wide composite columns, a 240 deep raked composite lintel, and a double 300 deep LVL at the top of the stack of door, which also acts as a wind beam. The combination of the double horizontal members made for a stiff frame unit with 6.2 kilonewtons racking capacity. In this instance, it was tied down to a timber floor, so the tie down bracket was the same, but 18 gauge washer head frame screws were used for tie down instead of screw bolts. Timber portal frame bracing systems are going to become more prevalent in residential construction. There are currently the two systems discussed here, but I'm sure there's others in development. Now, if we look at some other domestic portal frame opportunities, I'll touch on two case studies. The first is a combined house, shed and workshop in Tasmania. The architect mentioned to the builder that the timber portals could be done as trust portals. Once the frame and trust company was contacted, they recommended solid timber portals as shown in a previous project at the bottom right of screen. This span is perfect for a timber portal scenario and it crosses over a bit into the rural shed market. You can see the large workshop at one end that is essentially a nine metre span by 22 metre long shed. If we design all the portals the same, there's no reliance on the internal bracing walls and it makes supply and assembly easier. For this proposal, the wind classification was taken as N3 as the exact location was not provided and this is common for rural shed style buildings. A four metre base spacing gave a design of 190 by 45 LVL purlins at 900 centres, which butt into the timber portals. This is different to steel portal designs where C, Z or top hat sections continue over the top of the portals. As the timber purlins are deeper than steel purlins, by butting them into the side, it maximises the head height available, but also provides lateral restraint to the rafter element of the portal. From a cursory look at the loadings, there were four load cases considered in the preliminary design. These were dead and wind load combinations for strength and then serviceability wind loads for sway design. Two options have been proposed with slightly different member sizes. To keep column section width down and maximise available clear width in the workshop, the column was designed as a box beam. This allows the solid LVL sides to continue up and a single rafter to slip in between them. The gusset connection at the knee then only requires a screw pattern to be designed. As the rafters are single members, there will have to be a plywood gusset required at the apex to join them together. You can see that double 360 by 45 LVL box beam columns with a 450 by 63 rafter has given the most cost effective option and it's around half of what a structural steel solution would cost. You need to be wary when comparing a design such as this to a rural shed in terms of the cost and also the member sizes, as rural shed loadings are not as severe and allowable serviceability deflections are higher with them being class 10 buildings. This proposal is currently under view with the architect, under review with the architect and owner. The second case study is a single family home in New South Wales, which has an open plan vaulted living area in the centre of it. We were initially asked to do the subfloor design through our detailing department. And in reviewing the plans, it was noted that the current design included a lot of structural steel in the open plan living. Going back to the frame and trust company, we asked if they would be interested in a potential timber framed option to replace the steel and this led us to us putting forward an alternative timber option. If you look at the plan view, there are a number of points which help to achieve an integrated and more cost-effective timber design. The portal frames are located along the orange-coloured horizontal grid lines shown on the plan. 
and the two central ones have lengths of wall continue on both sides. These walls will provide sway resistance to the portal frames and essentially turn them into gravity frames. The section view also shows that the central area in the portal direction is predominantly protected by the rest of the structure. So very little wind load is applied directly to the vaulted area. So our proposal was as follows. PF1 were the two central gravity portals, which had lateral supports from the adjacent bracing walls. PF2 is a small portal across the front entry where the columns are restrained out of plane by a lowered flat front porch roof. PF3 is across the rear of the house with some restraint from the masonry fireplace wall. And PF4 at the end of the alfresco remains as steel. This is from an architectural perspective as the columns need to fit inside the box brick piers. We don't truly get a one-stop solution with this, but very close to it. It's important to remember here that timber can't do everything. Sometimes you need to use other materials. As an eminent engineer said a few years ago, you don't need to design the best timber building, you need to design the best building and use the right materials, including timber, where they are best suited. So looking at the portals, a combination of members has been chosen for this project. The columns are a prefabricated C-section, the same as the Mygrace system. This allows them to be hidden inside the 90 mil wall widths on each side. The rafters are 45 mil LVL on either side of the column LVL extension. If you reverse the orientation of the opposing column, then the apex just becomes a double 45 mil LVL which overlaps. The double LVL rafters also provide an additional shear plane for the screws, which increases the design capacity. The bottom line here is that the cost of the timber option will be thousands of dollars less than the structural steel option, and it will connect a lot easier to the lightweight timber walls. This project project is about to get underway in a month or so, and I'm pretty confident that the timber option will be chosen. So timber portals are not just suitable for large scale industrial and commercial buildings. And from this brief presentation, there are many instances where timber can be used and is most cost effective option in the residential sector. It's about recognising what's possible and approaching your engineer or one of the wood, engineered wood products distributors and asking the question. But if you want to use timber portals in large span application, then I'll hand it over to Rob to let you know how this can be done. Thank you.